Hi and welcome to another video of Type With Me. This video goes around asynchronous tasks and error handling with FPTS or Functional Programming TypeScript. Alright, let's go and see how this works. Alright, so asynchronous tasks are in a TypeScript application, mainly a sync await or promises, right? And when you throw an error, well, then you need to try catch it. But in um, functional programming TypeScript, we have a task, and a task is something that can never fail, right? It's some kind of intent that you always have some kind of results back there, and when something fails, it goes up within the functional programming TypeScript task right so a task is also an intention uh, an expression of intent right because when you have a task you always get something back even when there is something going on right so that's the promise that you get from a task <laughs> and that's quite ironically right because yeah, tasks and promises see Cool, so uh, let's dive in a little bit further because we now know that there is some kind of type check there and we know that we're gonna give an ID, in this case ABC, we know that it's not gonna fail, right? So that's why we wrap it into a task uh, here and we say that we will return a task which has a void as a return type, right? So that's a way to do it because now we, we just know, but sometimes you don't know what is in some tasks and that's not always easy to handle right. So in that case, we can go a little step further, right? And we can do the following thing. Okay, so this was just an example. I'm now going to give you another example. This example could be the following thing. It could be a bool task. It will give a promise a boolean back right. And then of course we have here a try catch uh, where we have an await sync function and we return true if everything goes right and we return false if we have an error. So we just catch it there where we want it to be. So by default it already uses the paradigm of uh, using a task but because we are returning a promise it can still have some kind of rejection into it so it still has some kind of ambiguity in it in itself so uh, let us rewrite it to a real task right so here we have it this is a real task bool task task boolean it's an asynchronous function here and yeah you now know that you always get a true or false when you are having a promise boolean you still can get a reject right you still can have that and that's the the, the big advantage of using a task you always know that you get a boolean back from that asynchronous function from that asynchronous flow you can very easily uh, turn uh, something into a task right so that's basically the same as promise.resolve we have here task.off and then you give a value to it and then yeah uh, you know that it's a task so you, you see it also like right here right same as uh, the promise.resolve we have task.off another great thing within uh, functional programming is either so you have either uh, type and then in this case left or you have either in this case type right so uh, left is the error and right is the result so what we could do is here have error well formatted uh, not well formatted sorry error not uh, well formatted and then we have here for example bool result and then of course it, it makes more sense to have so because when we have our pipe 
okay, which which is um, something from indeed functional uh, TypeScript function, where we go from from one function to another. We need to have something where we can say that it's either an error that occurs, right, or it it is some kind of bool result, right? So in that case, um, it, it, it makes it more easier to define certain things. So imagine you have a password that somebody provides and you want to give it some checks, right? Then you can very easily do something like this. You can have a flow imported from uh, the library um, FPTS. Right, and then we have here a flow. We have password off. We have password dot validate, which has a minimum length of eight, uh, capital letter required true, and then of course we do a map upon that, and we say that the password needs to be hashed, and we hash the password, and then of, of course after that we can save it to our database. This kind of validation flow can very easily be implemented, but of course, you can return in this case uh, crypt, uh, crypto pass, or you can have um, valid invalid or something like that. And then you can check if pipe. If pipeline is of the type invalid or of the type crypto pass, and then do something with it, right? If it's invalid, yeah, you uh, you don't save it to the database. If it's if it's valid, you have a crypto pass and you can save it to the database there, right? So that's a little bit how you could uh, easily uh, work with uh, a certain flow within functional programming. And when you have an error, you just do something with either. This is just uh, a small introduction. Next week, I will try to uh, give a real example how to use either and how to work with it, right? So that um, so that you understand it a little bit more in depth. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I thank you. For, for for watching this video right uh, i hope you learned how to use tasks and i hope you had something around the introduction of eater here thank you very much bye